Hello, welcome back to Ek Mulakat, dear friends. How do we learn life is the question I want to pose to you today. We have a lot of things to learn, but amazingly, there is a study which shows that only 12% of what we learn in school and colleges in our academic career is coming into practical use. So what about the 88%? We have a lot of courses, coaching classes. We have uh, life coaches who will teach you about how to lead life in a perfect manner. So, but the best way to learn life is to learn it from the experiences of people who already have had a successful life. And that is the significance of Ek Mulakat. And today we bring you Dr. R.N. Srinathan. He is a man of neuroscience and most important, he is deep into spirituality. He has recently published a novel which is Om is equal to I am, which is a spiritual novel. It will be interesting. Let us talk to him. Sir, welcome to Godlywood Studio. Thank you very much. And welcome to the headquarters of the Brahma Kumari. Oh, Sons. I love it. Uh, sir, your profile has been so... Uh, sir, you were, uh, I was going through your CV before we started the interview and it's so impressive and I couldn't memorize all of that. <laughs> so now I want to take a bit of time to, uh, for the audience sake uh, to give them uh, an idea of who you are and what you have done. You, are, you have retired from, uh, uh, retired from the university St. Matthew's University School of Medicine, right, yes. which is in West Indies and as a professor and chair of anatomy and neuroscience. Yes. And the most uh, important thing I, I saw was that you have published a lot of articles on uh, spirituality and uh, uh, you, you have written, you are, a, you are a famous writer, a Quora author in spirituality and Bhagavad Gita. You have written uh, many uh, articles on Bhagavad Gita and self-improvement. So. Uh, the question is, sir, uh, science and spirituality. Even though Einstein has said that uh, science without spirituality is lame and uh, spirituality without sciences can be blind. So, from that perspective, uh, how do you balance this thing? How do you develop an interest in both of this? To just put it succinctly, way back in 1992, I was abroad. I used to come once in a year to my native town in Karnataka, Bellary. Once I was there and I was going walk in the evening, I heard some sound blaring through. Then I moved towards that place and uh, some uh, Swami was giving a lecture. The main thing that attracted me there was suddenly he told you are not the body walking grace of anatomy, something like that. But it so happened that I stopped, even I couldn't remember the names of some students, so we call it anomia, uh, what we say, not remembering the names of students. Okay, okay. And then I thought, then I had ulcer, I thought my end is coming. So How, when my, how old were, uh, were you? I, I was time? just 42. Okay. I thought I am going to die. So when I am going to die, anyhow, let me know what is this before going, before dying. Then I started thinking about it. What is all this? Then I started studying Bhagavad Gita. I got into the depths of it. Mm -hmm. And finally, mm -hmm. I was so much attracted by this, that you are not the body, you are not the mind, you are Atma, you are Self. That is where I started my life, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and my life changed. And I started to by heart all the shlokas of Bhagavad Gita. I did it, 700 shlokas. I later remembered them from back to front. All this I did. You know the result? I am still alive. After so many years, it is 2022. And my memory is still afresh. This is all because I changed my outlook of life mm -hmm. from fear. So uh, this is, I think, a very important lesson. You as a person of science, and you understood the, the basic of spirituality, which is uh, I am the soul living in the body. And this one thing allowed you to handle the tool, the body as a tool, you understood the separation, the detachment, 
this may sound a bit um, you know off track to our uh, people who are leading normal lives they don't believe that uh, spirituality is for them mostly things are changing after corona but still uh, so from your experience sir uh, practical life uh, you said the, the gita the t learnings helped you uh, can you uh, give us a bit more detail some incidents where were you were you easily uh, i mean handled the body the diseases which you said uh, yeah uh, how did you do that oh so i would be i am very extremely happy to share that with you to say i am a neuroscientist mm. i know in and out of brain i know all about the physical body how it works how much science we know now how much we do not know that also i know perhaps we may be knowing 5 to 10% of the brain mm. even that mm. what does it say i will give you in just a nutshell which perhaps others might not have touched at all because spirituality and neuroscience they generally don't go together mm. neuroscience people are neuroscience people spirituality people are spirituality and they are so diverse and there is no cohesion between the two i am perhaps a rare individual who can bring these two things together you see there are two types of functions in the body mm. voluntary involuntary yes there are so many involuntary functions in the body which automatically they do their job mm. Mm. you cannot say i am fed up with this life heart stop it won't stop i want to leave today digestive system get upset it won't get upset it means there are so many things in the human body which are automatic mm. and involuntary yeah and all these involuntary functions including respiration is done at the lowest part of the brain Okay. Involuntary, the lowest stem, involuntary. Then, as evolution went up, there is a lobe called limbic lobe, just above that. This adds emotion to our feelings. Hmm. Emotion. Even animals have some emotion for their newborn yes, and yes. all that. The emotion is added. this emotion is voluntary mm -hmm. and above that there is a voluntary brain cerebrum which receives the external world mm -hmm. which analyzes the external world these two are voluntary what has happened we are completely immersed in this voluntary and in voluntary we have totally forgot okay. it is involuntary which maintains the health of the body not voluntary voluntary always disturbs it mm. and this in voluntary what has happened we have forgotten there is something in voluntary that is where our meditation comes the meditation means forgetting the external world where five senses bring in forgetting the attachment or the emotion that is added to our thought processes and get united only with involuntary functions of the body like respiration that, that is meditation meditation is climbing down from higher levels of voluntary functions to our involuntary reality to some extent maybe uh, sir i think our Uh, people of science will be listening they should be listening to this because uh, somewhere they are not able to bridge that gap uh, but even we know people like albert einstein louis pasteur they were more spiritual than they were scientific people so the, there were there are many people we can take as an inspiration you know, we have heard about thomas alva edison who uh, uh, had a strong patience and value system which he exhibited to the world so somewhere this connection is being lost nowadays and because of the overwhelming scientific things that are coming out 
we sometimes started believing that consciousness can be a byproduct of brain just like the stomach produces its seal. <laughs> Maybe our brain produces thoughts and all and this was going all together on our own track and then we have this spiritual uh, miracles. So, uh, how did your uh, career and uh, how did your life changed because of this? Uh, you said uh, th there were uh, uh, tell us some incidents uh, where you know you were able to inspire people by this combination of science and spirituality. There are many people who have been uh, to some extent helped by this spirituality. As you rightly pointed out, you were just touching that. Mm. What modern scientists say is consciousness is created by the brain mm. function. Yes. Where what as uh, it is not true. Yes. Well, I cannot emphatically say because anything which we cannot show yes. through five senses, yes. Yes. I cannot yes. be very emphatic. Mm. But mm. even then, it is very uh, natural because it gives results. When we have undertaken meditation and it has cured people. Yes. I have been able to help many of my students who had come from America. And uh, they used to come to me. I used to help them, not by medicine, not by anything else, but by the spirituality that it is consciousness, it is Atma that is primary, and not its derivative, body or mind, which is secondary. And we depend on secondary, and we have forgotten the original Atma from which we have been derived. This is beautiful. I also want to ask you, because nowadays in our world, people are finding it very difficult to take care of their own thoughts and emotions. They make a mess of it. So these are faculties, these are tools with which we can, the Atma can do its work properly. Uh, but uh, what can you uh, advise our audience? How can we take care of this? Very good. Wonderful question. See, answer which I am going to give, perhaps you will not get anywhere. I am very sure about it. You see, in 15th chapter, uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, uh, shlokas come mm. in Bhagavad Gita. Dvamimo purushau loke kshatak chakshare se kshatak sarvani bhutani kutastho akshara ujjit. I don't go deep into those uh, shlokas, but let me tell you. You know, when I am seeing you, how I am seeing you, I have to talk, I am talking signs because we have to talk science. Whatever science has provided it till date, we have to make use of it. Are we yes, not making yes, use yes. of the phones? Are we not making use of yes, the computer? Yes. And we have to make use of that. And from there, we have to take a leap upwards like a javelin throw or mm. some pole vault like thing. You, know? yes, yes, you go yes. up and leave this and jump off, something like that. Here, when I am seeing you, it is the light photons which fall on you. And it is photons which are reflected yes, from your outer yes. surface of the body, fall on my retina, and that becomes an electrical impulse. This electrical impulse is now dancing in the brain. You may not believe. It is this electrical impulses dance what we see is the external world. All external world is created within, within our brain. brain as electrical impulses. Mm. It's as easy as that. It is a very truthful statement. Close your eyes, close your ears, world disappears. There is no world. Because it's your brain which creates that. I have utilized the Bhagavad Gita knowledge here. The manifest world, what you see, very peculiar world. Will you please do one thing? Keep one of your hand here, one here. You will feel both of them are the same time you feel. But won't you see there is some distance here, from here to the brain and Definitely. there to the brain? Yes, yes, yes. Where that distance has gone? Mm. D distance yes, means it yes, takes yes, time yes, for yes, the impulses yes. to go. So, so why but didn't it take time to... That is the question you should ask. Why you didn't? You know why? 
the brain takes some time, 300 milliseconds, to know what it is, and then it sets the clock back and tells as though it is running now. What you are experiencing, the it's world is all old world of some few milliseconds. It's not the present world. It cannot be. It simply cannot be. It means it's moving so fast. If you give me a shake hand, and if you give me another shake hand, you are not the same person. Why, you know? Millions of cells have died, millions of yes. cells are born, mm. virtually yes, you are yes, a graveyard. Yes. But still your name remains, your body has changed. Body keeps changing. It's changing body, it is changing world, mm. and how mm. you have fixed it as real? And it is an electrical impulse in the brain. This is the truth. Therefore, in Bhagavad Gita it is stand, it is Kshara, Kshara Prapancha, means it is a moving world. And Akshara Prapancha means it's electrical impulses. Somewhere, uh, as I listen to you, sir, I feel uh, this is where quantum physics is taking us now. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and uh, people will be amazed to know that uh, it is coming closer and closer. Sure. And in the near future, I think the gap will be bridged. It will down. be. Yes. Therefore, yes. we have to wake up. We have to understand the scientific background. And we have to build up even whatever that we are following. We have to keep changing because no water which, is, which stays still can be pure. Yes. It's moving water, moving world. We use the word tatastha. Tatastha means, you know, tata. On the bank of a river, you just stand. What do you see when you stand on the bank of a river? Flowing river. So this is flowing world. And you become Atma. And keep observing the flowing world. Remain, become Tatastha. Then you have realized. And that is meditation. Now we have seen Kshara Prapancha, which is slowly, always moving. Whatever information, if you take tomorrow, you, you can try, all of you can try. Take a watch, take some milliseconds watch and see. You can never tell the time. Because even before you tell, it is changed. Yes, yes, Won't you yes. see that time also is there? How do you say, then my time of my hour, my minute only is right. How can that be? So that is Kshara Prapancha. And when you withdraw into meditation, you are into Akshara Prapancha, mm. where there is electrical impulses mm. shining like stars in the night. That is what meditating. Then, then you transcend time and space, which are the limitations. Then you transcend time and space, and there must be a witness for this, what is going on. And you are that. Hmm, if there is no uh, uh, observer, there is no there is no. Then if there is no observer, how on earth it will be there? So, you are that observer. Even in quantum physics it comes. Without when you are observing something, it becomes a point. When you don't observe, it is a wave. It's a particle or it is a wave. Ab Even that is proved. Mm, so yes. there must be an yes. observer. See, only three things, so simple. There is Kshara Prapancha. There is Akshara Prapancha, which is creating it. And there is an observer. And you are that observer. And keep meditating, sit in meditation and become observer. This moment, this second, you have reached that. That is how our science helps. You are taking us all together to a different world and it is mind-boggling when, when uh, we, we transcend, we try to transcend uh, time and space. And that is practically what Rajyoga does. And uh, Brahma Kumaris has been uh, perpetrating it uh, for, I think, more than 80 years now. So, and you are here uh, for the first time. So, uh, this, this, uh, sir, I would like to uh, tell you that we are also expecting a changing world. This is changing and uh, every Kali Yuga should give way to Satyuk again. So, that is one of the basic things which Brahma Kumaris are working on and uh, we all 
and we work on ourselves for that. Self-transformation is the way to world transformation. So we all of us want to see a world where deities, human beings live like deities. So that is a beautiful concept which we uh, have as a vision that is what Paramatma has given us. So uh, uh, tell us something about your experience here in the Brahma Kumaris. See, that's quite, I really extremely happy to be here. So our uh, sister Ruchi Ji, Trinath Ji, they were so kind, they got us here. And it is such a blissful thing to be in this campus. And uh, I am so, uh, what we say, almost uh, speechless for the way they treated us. It is uh, extraordinarily good. And uh, as far as this physical, this one is concerned, we are very happy. But as far as uh, the other aspect is concerned, as you were really mentioning about Satyu, what I feel, when we start putting the, our ideas in perspective, the very second that we have withdrawn from the disappearing world into the forming world in the brain, back into an observer, we have moved to Satyug. So moving to Satyug yes, is in yes. our hand. Mm, it's mm. in our hand. It's yes, exclusively... Yes. A individual. Yeah, the more accurately you do that, you have it. You have now. it now, then yes, why, yes. why do you wait? If you experience it, it's there right now. And if you have no idea about these things, then you are leading a miserable life, even of if course. you are in, in a, you know, abundant. Yeah, of uh, what uh, use is that? Yes. Of what use is that? Indeed, you have to leave everything and go one day and uh, changing body. One day the body, you know, ages, all these things come, huh? the old age. Uh, it is all, uh, but the knowledge, what we say, Jnan, the knowledge tells you withdraw, 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 until it is impossible to withdraw. That is you. Mm. That is observer. And when you are with that observer, that is Atma. When you have found your Atma, nothing else to be found. You have reached your Swaraj, you have reached your uh, the ultimate. And that is perhaps the idea of Brahma Kumari Satyug. I personally feel because they have expanded so much worldwide. I personally want to help them to incorporate the scientific background of what I am talking now into their perspective so that they expand further and reach the minds of the younger children who are scientifically modeled. So that should be a very good idea. Yes, sir. Do. You brought up youth. And uh, we are an amazingly young country, sir, India. Uh, some 54 percentage of Indian population is youth. Yes. It is vibrating with energy. So uh, if the perspective is right for the youth, but nowadays the, the things they are into are quite, you know, uh, it's altogether going in a different direction. Uh, I was recently watching a show which is meant for youth. I'm not taking the name, but, uh, but it was all extreme kind of things and uh, the language which they were using. That show is specifically made for the youth. Uh, the judges sitting there are all youth and the youth icons maybe. Uh, but the whole structure and thing and the aim they were taking to. So this, has, this is becoming more and more common nowadays. Uh, the aim of becoming a divine person is not there anymore. What advice? Uh, have you for the youth? Yes, yeah, it is materialism, materialism, materialism. You are producing things and things are pushed over the children and yes, all. You yes. take, for example, the other day, whenever I go to an airport, I just keep watching. To my surprise, I see 95 to 98 percent of them have their smartphone and keep working. And you know, when their smartphone is working, what happens to the brain? The brain must be working. Of course. The brain yes. must be. And the night, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, they keep working on the phone and sleep. You know, a brain immediately of electrical activity, if you go to sleep, 
you get bad dreams and you will not get sleep and all these things will come into the mind and they move away from reality towards the unreality created by the brain. Mm. Whatever that is created by the brain is unreality for even the information. That can't be real. It's all unreal. It's created. As I told you, you know, past few milliseconds past we take as the present. And we have to understand that and give mm. relaxation to the brain. The brain. It yes. comes only through meditation. And we go to meditation only when we enjoy it. We enjoy it when we give peace importance. Thanks a lot for coming. We want you to come again and again and give us more such scintillating lectures. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. I appreciate and thank you very much for having me here on the show and to all my friends who are helping me to come here. Thank you, Thank sir. you. Thank you. So that was Dr. R. N. Srinathan. Dear friends, that was an amazing journey for half an hour, uh, even less than half an hour. I enjoyed it thoroughly. And I hope you also uh, have had the, the point in your mind. We need to come back to that point, that, that point where we become peaceful and then the life turns itself. All the technology is there for us to use, but unless we have the foundation right, things can go awry and it can uh, disturb our future because this is a period of transition and we need to choose wisely and the time, coming times can be turbulent and we need to find the stability right now. So on that note, let us end today's Ek Mulakat and we will come back again with another episode. Until then, it is a goodbye from all of us in the studio.